Hey, Doug, how's it going? It's going good, man. How are you? It's you know, it's going, it's going. You know, I can't really complain. So, um, I had sent you my audio files that we had captured while we were researching in Alabama. Um, you want to go over what some of those findings were for us? Sure. And the first thing I do, I do want to say is that, of course, I worked with David Ellis from the Olympic Project on your sounds. Um, I thought they were worth working on. Um, certainly, um, there was a lot to go through, as you know. <laughs> Yes. But um, yeah, no, you definitely captured some very interesting sounds, and yeah, I'd love to talk about them. Yeah, sure. So um, let's go. Let's go through. Uh, we can go in numerical order. Uh, start with file one. That's the only was... file I don't have any record of, because we start <laughs> file two, and I think file one didn't have anything really unique on it. So we kind okay. of skip the feedback on that. But we okay, definitely, all right, so, file two is where we started, you know, really digging deep. All right, so, all right, so let's let's start with file two then. Yeah. Um, what 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 did you guys find on it? Well, one of the unique things about your recordings is that some of them, some of these sounds and howls and whatnot, were at six hundred hertz, which is it gets us into that. Bigfoot spectrum. So we know, um, although there were coyotes on there too, that you're aware of, but there yes. seems like there were also some Bigfoot owls. And very often I get to hear recordings that have both sounds because the coyotes hmm. seem to react to the Bigfoot howls and the Bigfoot seem to react to the coyote howls. So very often you'll have, you need to be able to be able to separate them on a spectrograph. And yeah. uh, David did a really good job at separating those. And so there were sounds that resonated at 600 hertz. And that is the sweet spot for Bigfoot vocalizations. So, wow. So we, we, we were really right there capturing something right. unique. Yep, yep. In fact, I believe one creature was at 600 hertz and another one was at 621 hertz. And you can actually hmm. tell different individuals by the frequency wow. that they're you know, yeah, which is really cool. Um, that is amazing. Yeah. So, and and just so you know, there were more than one creature that were documented in your in your tapes. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, th thank you guys, and and thank thank David too for. Um, yeah doing this for me I, you know I, I know you guys are busy i know you guys got a lot of stuff going on so it, it's greatly appreciated to help me out with this um so how about file file three that i know that file three was very similar to yeah. number two so file um, three, um once again could have bigfoot vocals and we always say could have because we don't have video of these things doing their their vocals yeah so I don't care how good they are. You can only say could be, should be, maybe, because David, for instance, has 8,500 recordings documented. Wow. So he's got a huge database to study. So it isn't like he's got 10 samples. And yeah. David is also working with other scientists that even know more than David does. Um, and they're examining this stuff and... So between everybody, there's 8,500 vocalizations. Um, and I rec recently just got my son, who is also a sound expert. Um, hmm. He just recently took on the 8,500 vials. If you can imagine that daunting task. And he's analyzing them through analog equipment. Oh, that's so cool. We had it on a completely different twist. But anyhow, so... Um, once again, you've got um, a dog barking like three times, and you have a howl overlap. Um, hmm. And the howl is from a great distance. And it was probably that howl that got the dogs barking. Yeah. So they're, you know, they're interacting. You know, one, one animal is reacting to the other one. That's So it, it's, it's definitely something that um, – 
these dogs that are around are used to as well yep. for them to be able to react to it in that way. Yep. And so you can't, now I don't know if you, did you record file two on the same night you recorded file three? Yeah. Were different days or were they the same day? Um, it was, it was within a three day period. Okay. But um, we, I, do know, we do know though that it was the exact same creature on file three that was in file two. <laughs> So whatever it is, it's living within that area. Correct. So, um, okay. in fact, that's why it's so important to continue doing research, to go back there to get more, because yep. we may discover another individual that's there that wasn't there before. Or you can get the same exact voice, you know, basically a voice print on hmm. the creature that's at 621 hertz. And so the that's next one comes out at 621. We know it's him. Same dude, same creature, hmm. you know. So, do you think that the 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 six twenty one is more the the higher frequency is a male or a female? Is, are you guys able to pinpoint that? No, not there. Just isn't enough data on that because once okay. again, there's no there's no observation. If we could get ten people to record sounds at six twenty one hertz and actually had video where you could see the genitalia, <laughs> no, you could. <can> start- <laughs> okay. Well, you can Fair start enough. consumptions. Without that, we have no way to know. Because they're, they have a, a vocal range that's insane from extremely low to extremely high, literally off the charts high. If you listen to the, um, the Sierra sounds, yeah. you'll hear one creature covering a vocal range that's just absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've I've heard those before, and yeah. it's it's definitely something out of the ordinary. Well, not only can they go from very low mad to very high, they can do it in such a split second. You know, um, where you'd have to get there slow, you'd have to keep going yeah. up the scales, and they can just do it on a you know a split second. They can go from very low. That's mad. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, because I, you know, I would have to prepare a little bit if I wanted to get a really loud, long sound, because um, I just I don't have the uh, capacity for the bass, you know. And, and, yeah. and it's pretty amazing that there's something out there that has that that can do it in the drop of a dime. Well, I, one is I definitely think you know you're using a parabolic. I believe a parabolic mic for some of these, or not all. Yeah, of them. some of them were. Yeah, not all of them. But you should always at least keep an omnidirectional, like a Zoom H1 recorder going at the same time you're doing it's even better to have two h1 separated by hmm. 30 40 feet and then the parabolic mic because then a lot can, a lot more can be done um in study okay cool i'll well we're because we're planning on going back in the fall um according to the property owner the they're more active in the fall than they yeah. are in the in the spring so um, it's going to be very interesting um, as well, far the, well, as hopefully well, a lot more activity. Well, the one thing that could be done if you separate the two, the three mics is to gauge distance. This hmm. distance can actually be gauged now because you can triangulate on what's going on. So, so you, like put yeah. one closer to the tree line, one closer yes. to me. Yes. Okay. We don't have to be. They don't have to be that far apart, but with some distance, you know. I, I think I, what did I say? Ten feet. I, what I meant to say was, like fifty feet. Okay. But you have to keep track of which one was where, including your SD cards need to be then cataloged that this is out of you know, um, audio recorder one that was near the tree line and this one was over here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very cool. All right. Um, how about, I think we were on file four or five. Um, yes. Um, so we've gone through, yes. So you definitely recorded the same vocalizer, um, on file three that you had on file two and I believe file one too. Um, so file four through 10 also sound like the same individual. Hmm. So at this point we're only recording one individual. Okay. So this is a completely separate individual. This is one individual that's on file two, three, and four through 10. Oh, okay. So it's the same individual. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's amazing. So you only recorded one individual in those tapes. But I think as we get farther, um, let's see here. I'm trying, I could have swore. It's been a while. Sorry, Matt. It's been a while since I've looked no, at No my, worries. Um, Cause there was something where we, Oh, um, let me read this. Um, Oh, so apparently, um, and this, this is probably my fault. I didn't take my notes properly, but I remember there actually were three distinct vocals that were strung together on, I think, tape nine. Okay. That, that was on tape nine from three distinct individuals. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that and that and tape nine is the one where I caught them singing. Yes. And so there you've recorded three different individuals. Wow. Not one, three. Which I hope that makes some sense to you. Yeah, it it, it actually does because it, it was it, it was a very interesting thing because that was the first time I've ever heard them uh, vocalizing in a harmonic sort of way. I didn't realize that that was something that they were capable of because uh, there's not a lot of information about uh, that capabilities as out in public domain. Right. Um, so it was definitely something new for. I, I at first I thought I was experiencing something paranormal or somebody was out there with a boombox playing something. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it was it's very refreshing to hear that yeah no they were out there and they were harmonizing yeah that's and I, I, cool. I i've heard that before myself um it's very i was actually with my son um who's the audio expert and we were up in snow yeah. and we listened to singing for 20 minutes wow it was just amazing because it was one of those calm nights you know where there's no wind the lake was like glass and it was beautiful weather. And we're in the boat. And we just got done fishing walleyes. And we're just kicking back. Um, and the singing started. And it was absolutely amazing. Sounded like we were at an opera. Yeah. So it was crystal clear <laughs> for us. And so ever since then, and of course, we're 500 miles from the nearest road. I mean, there's, yeah. not, there's a winter road that runs through there. that It's only open in the winter, but. You know, during the summer, I've never once ever, you know, 25, 30 years ago in there, I've never once seen another person. So, wow. you know, desolate. So it must have been, I know it wasn't black bears. Black bears don't sing. I don't think it was a moose. It wasn't a, a caribou. It had to be a Bigfoot. I mean, what else can sing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Other what else has the capacity for harmony? <laughs> Cause that's okay. the, cause that's the thing that kind of separates it more than just an average animal. Yeah. Harmony takes passion and soul in a way to be able to do that. But um, there's a new term that David actually coined called a trigram, a trigram. Okay. Guaranteed no one's ever heard this word because it's a brand new moniker that David invented to describe Bigfoot vocals. Um, Bigfoots have a very inter interesting vocal structure. It's as if it's similar to throat singing where there's numerous notes happening all at once. Okay. And so their vocals are very, very unique. They're not really that hard to tell from a, from a human or a coyote. You know, people always think, oh, how are you ever going to know? Coyotes don't do trigrams. Hmm. You recorded trigrams. Wow. So, well, well, I, I, pre I appreciate you guys looking at it. You know, I, that was one of the things I didn't want to do. Um, I, I did, I definitely did not want to be one of those people that go, Oh, well, you know, I have a, uh, a bunch of things that I think are howl, and then, you know, I, I, I publish it, and then everybody comes, Oh, no, it's a coyote, it's a coyote, it's a coyote. And, you know, yeah. I, I wanted to be 100% sure. And, and, you know, you guys have given me that. So, thank you. Well, once again, Matt, there's never a hundred percent, but you know, um, it gets pretty close to that. So file, okay. File eight through 10 were pretty much like Swiss cheese because there's so much data missing for some reason, which okay. once again, I don't know why you're going to know more why that data is missing. It's just, 
it looks like Swiss cheese in the spectrogram. Hmm. It's really not much can be done. But then file nine was totally different. That's the one that re- the singing was recorded on. Yeah. Was file nine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, fi- file nine and I believe file 10. But I believe that I, I want to say that it's because I, I, I want – to say that it was because I ran it through the spectrogram, um, my my program that I have, um, and the, I think I believe all three of those files were captured with the parabolic dish, and I want to say that files eight and ten I had tried to clear some of that um, reduction out. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry that there was like that you know the high pitch from the uh, the parabolic dish that that feedback or whatever it's called. I tried to clean it, clear those out, but I think file nine was fine because that was the one that I just used the original audio and I'd sent that one over to you. Oh, I got um, you. so actually yeah. file nine was the same as file 10, just not cleaned up. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Well, see, you got, you got busted. Then. We knew <laughs> you, you got busted. Yeah, I got busted. And then file but, five, five, file five had walking, and you yes. were convinced it was biped walking. It came up, and it's consistent with an ungulate. Okay, and and when an ungulate, you mean like uh, a yeah. quadruped? Okay, yeah, right, something with four legs. Four legs. Ungulate is a deer. Could have been a deer. I don't. You see, you live where now? Alabama. Um, I live in I, I live in Florida, but the property is in Alabama. Okay, so it was. Uh, it was consistent with a deer. Okay. Yeah. So, well, I, I I mean, that's just what it sounded like to me playing it back through on the audio. Sure. So um, the, I, I believe on that same clip, there was like an owl hooting. Was that actually an owl? Yes. Okay. Just actually, wanted to make sure. So. Yep. Yep. Because um, we would have known if it wasn't an owl. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, you know, it it, it sounded it sounded very bassy to me, so I just figured, hey, I'll you know, I, I think it's walking. They'll figure it out for me, but it's on the same file, so you know, if it comes back, hey, you got something. So, so yeah, um, I don't know if you want to play uh, file nine. I don't know. How well. Yeah, I'd love to hear it again. Should be. Here we go. It's amazing. And that's the one that you're saying that that is three individuals making that together. Yes. That's that's so cool. And and a, and a bit of a distance apart. Oh, so like it wasn't like they were like close to each other, like like a choir almost. It, they were separated, making that sound. Wow, yep. <laughs> wow, yep. that's amazing, man. You know, I, 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 you know, I hope that the next time we go back, I'm able to capture it in a little bit better. Yeah. Um, one question I did want to ask you too, uh, as far as the Zoom microphones go, because that's that's what we already have. Um, is it, should we use like a lavalier mic on it or should we just use the omnidirectional that's built into it? Yeah. The, the two crisscross omnidirectionals is the way yep. to just leave it alone. If you're going to leave okay. them out, Perfect. Right, you can, you can stretch cling wrap around the mics and the whole audio recorder, but make sure it's very, very tight and very thin. Okay. You know, that, right. um, saran wrap, I guess they call it. No, yeah. no, it's cling wrap, cling wrap. The stuff that you yeah, just you're talking about. They're all you can't ever find the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, stuff. that's, that's true. Great. A lot of people will put it in plastic bags and leave it out. Well, the bag will flap in the wind, and then they get all sorts hmm. of sounds. But if you stretch the cling wrap, um, you'll be amazed. You won't even know it's there, and your your mic will stay safe in the rain and so on. I mean, you can leave it out there. You could. Um, I always tell people, don't be afraid to try all sorts of weird areas, even near their home in the middle of the night. There's a there's an area where the power line leads into, and it's wooded. Maybe there's a swamp. Maybe there's a creek. But maybe it's kind of in the suburbs. You would be surprised what you'll hear out there at night, 2, 3, 4 in the hmm. morning. 
It's absolutely amazing. I really urge people to start, you know, just because there's a Walmart five, five miles away does not mean that there isn't a really good area to do research near your home. Too many people make such a big deal out of having to drive, you know, 300 miles to go do research. You don't need to do that. You know, you live, yeah. in, you, you live in a state already where there's some of the best Bigfoot opportunities for research ever. And I guarantee you can find a place near your own backyard that you can go to and do research. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah I, have, I have a couple different areas that are within an hour at least. Very cool. So. You, you might be surprised. You might find one 20 minutes away. So You know, I sure hope so. I sure do. Well, um, I think I think we can wrap it up. Thank you very much again, and and please send uh, David my regards as well. Yes. But I, I I really do appreciate it, and uh, you know I'm looking forward to getting more and sending it over to you guys, and That's hopefully cool. we can start building some more data as yeah. far as what we're capturing down here, matching matching what you guys are catching in other places in the country. Um, and, you know, I th especially with, and hopefully we get more of that singing too. I'd like, I'd like to get it on a longer recording without the parabolic. That yeah. that's my next goal. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully I once again, appreciate it. You made the database and we can go from there. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm.